On this episode of the History of the Course podcast with Curtis and Josh, we take a look at the band known as I Wrestled a Bear Once. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Is Survived by Pro for news and the latest episode postings. And make sure to subscribe to the show, leave us a five star review, and write us a comment on YouTube or whatever podcast service you're using. Make sure to check us out on TikTok and give us a follow at Is Survived by Productions. And if you'd like to see us do some live streams, leave us a comment or tweet us the keyword stream. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. The devil is in Atlanta, <laughs> army surrounded. If you get down to the roots and see that they're swollen with poison, would you still love them? And if you only knew how they tied the noose around your neck, would you still love them? Welcome back to the History of the Cores podcast, where each and every episode, we take a look at the history of a band from the core genre. My name is Curtis, and with me as always is my co-host, and mustard, Dijon mustard colored shirt. Mustard man. Where mustard man, Josh, <laughs> mustard man. What up, Josh? What up? Bro, bro, bro. Where's your sunglasses, bro? Bro. Oh, 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 hold on. Come on, bro. Bro, bro. Come on, bro. Can't bro. be doing this episode uh, yeah, without come on, them. Man. Come on. Hey. Did you get you? Did you get you a tank top too, bro? Come on. I'm bro. ready for a pizza party. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Okay. So. You can probably tell who we're going to talk about by these backgrounds, these lovely backgrounds. Uh, no! But we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Here Crystal, in just no! a second. <laughs> we'll get to that here in just a second. But we got a couple of things to talk about here. First off, uh, we're going to be calling this our our album quilts. We're going to be sharing in future episodes our album quilts. So if you want to see that, make sure to check that out on the video side. But we don't have those yet. Uh, still in work, but. This is where, uh, before each episode, we uh, give you guys albums and uh, bands that we listened to this week. So, Josh, why don't you do us a favor and start us off? What did you listen to this week, besides um, this band that we're talking about? Yeah, so obviously, uh, so my Wrestle the Bear once. Yes. Um, and just going through my Spotify for the week... Um, you're gonna love this one. I've been listening to the forecast quite a bit, dude. It is hilarious that you say that because I just listened to was it late night conversations? Is that the album title? The yes. first one that we ever heard. Yeah, I listened yes. to that album the other night on the way home from work, and I, I thought about you, and I thought, man, I had forgotten about how underrated this band was and how much we used to love them. Oh yeah, they're great, and they've got a oh, few good man. albums. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's just the first one that came comes to my mind, and I listened to it the other night. But yeah, Go yeah, on. they're great. Um, and then also Daybreaker, um, that northbound nice. train ZP. Nice. Um, had a had a fit of nostalgia, and I listened to some Skylit Drive uh, as the album Wires and the Concept of Breathing. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, they're kind of in the same vein as like We Came as Romans. So. Okay. Um, cancer bats. Listen to birthing the giant. Of course, I can't. Nice. I can't get enough. Let me guess. Uh, did you listen to pneumonia hawk over and over and over? No, at the end I did. But uh, <laughs> okay, no, just that whole album. Um, I listened. Well, I to... guess I gotta listen to pneumonia hawk. It's the last song. Why <laughs> not? I guess. <laughs> I listened to uh, Queens of the Stone Ages songs for the deaf. Uh, nice. That album. Uh, most of these are just going to be albums. I don't usually just go find a song. No, 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 no. That's yeah. That's what this is for. Is like I'm talking full albums. I'm not talking songs. We're talking albums here. Okay. Um, I don't know if you know this band, uh, Down to Nothing. Mm, no, I've never heard of them. They're a hardcore band. Um, okay. uh, first album. Let me see what that was. 
They've been around a while. All right. Interesting. Um, their first album was in 2006. Okay. Looks like. Yeah, the and first full going. length was 2007. That was the one that I was listening to. Okay. What's it called? The Most. The Most. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see here. I also listen to Oh, this one is this one's a good one. I'm not going to hide this from you, okay? I was listening to uh the Harry Potter soundtrack for Sorcerer's <laughs> Stone. <laughs> What in the uh, world? <laughs> in the interest of full disclosure here, I gotta, I gotta. Tell I want you honesty. That. I want honesty here, man. Um, I was listening to Shipwreck in the Sand. Nice. Um, I've actually come to really like that album. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and because I really like that album, I had to go back and listen to the album that it sounds just like a Trey's <laughs> Death Grip on yesterday. Nice. You still hear the comparisons? Oh yeah. It's all the, over the, the place. Whatever, it's rampant. Yeah, okay. yeah okay. it's rampant. Okay. And it's great. I like it. It doesn't feel like anybody's like copying each other or anything. Right. It just yeah. like, she's like, whoa, okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, because I've been talking about it so much, I finally went back and listened to uh, that I Am Ghost album, the okay. We We're Always yep. Searching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Good album. Not, yeah, it's all right. It doesn't hold up as well. And no, God, it's, the yeah. quality is terrible. Whoever mixed yeah. that album needs to be slapped. Um, <laughs> I listened to uh, one of my favorite albums, uh, Arsonist Get All the Girls. Which one is it? Is it the... Uh... There's, there's uh... three that I think are like phenomenal. And there's a couple pretty good ones. But it's not their, it's not their most popular one, right? Game of Life? No. No, okay. Game of Game of Life was my my favorite album it, at yeah. the time it came out. But is it the one that they produced themselves in later years? Yes. I was listen it called? to the color. Listen to the color. Okay. Yeah. I remember you Hit, hyping that one up a lot. Yeah. Hits from the Bow is also that's the third. That one is really great too. But sure. uh, cool. listen to the color. Yeah. There's. I would. I would highly recommend that album. You're not going to be disappointed with that one. Okay. Um, I listened to the Witcher soundtrack because there's some bangers on there also. Oh my goodness. Um, and then I uh, listened to Converge, uh, the Jane Doe album, and also um, You Fail Me. So They did, uh, I think they're doing a re-release of an album. Are I they? think. Yeah, but I can't remember which album. I Is saw it Axe to Fall? This week. Because we've definitely been at least 10 years from Axe to Fall. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I, anymore, you do it on anniversaries, right? So That was a pretty great album. Wouldn't That's surprise me. I'll have to look it back up. But anything else? Um, I think that was it. Oh, I also listened to uh, Radical Every Time I Die. Nice. Very nice. Cool. I think that's it. Okay. Okay. Uh what about you? Okay, so you seem to be doing like one and done in terms of like bands. <laughs> I'm more of a I do I do one album by a band, I'm like, eh, I'll do another one. So I've got a lot of like I think same the only artists, one, but like Yeah, I think the but, only one I had in there where I had multiple was the forecast because I listened forecast, to okay. In oh, a yeah, Shadow of Two Gunmen, Late Night Conversations, and then the newest the one. one? Or well, the one that they came back with. Because um, I don't even know if they've made any more music since that return album. I think it was the like, the self titled. Yeah, because okay. it was the one after the Shadow of Two Gunmen. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So mine's a lot of like same artists, just different albums. So like, uh, Oh Sleeper, I listened to When I Am God, um, Son of the Morning, um. Emery, I listened to uh, The Week's In, uh, We Do What We Want. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Where'd it go? Uh, oh, and in, uh, in Shallow Seas, We we Sail. And then their okay. newest one, uh, Rev Some Dirt on it, which I, I don't know if you've seen the uh, the album cover of it, but dude, it is gnarly. I love it. It's a. No, uh, and I haven't heard the I haven't heard the new one. It's pretty good. Um, I mean, it doesn't hit like old Emory, but I mean, it's still pretty good. Um, it's a uh, it's a red background, and it's got like a, a circular saw blade 
with a guy's hand in it, but he's missing like the, these three fingers. <laughs> so it's pretty brutal. Um, I also listened to. So have you ever heard the band Dayseeker? I've heard of them. I don't. I don't know if I've listened to them. They're pretty good. Um, they they've got some good albums that you can just like turn it on and just like let it go and and it. Like I really enjoyed it. I listened to two of their albums. Um, one of them I can't remember what it's called, and I wish this thing would blow up bigger where I could actually see. Um, shoot, I listened to their albums. I, I can't remember what the names of them are right at the top of my head. Um, went back with a classic, uh, Manchester Orchestra, Black Mile, Black Mile to the Surface. That's a good one. Okay. Um, what else I, I still. To uh, I've not listened to all of them, but my favorite is still that I've heard is everything. You mean everything nothing. nothing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a great album, man. Um, uh, listen to Fortress by Protest the Hero. That's a great album. Okay. Um, and then we start getting into some post rock like instrumental uh, albums. So you wouldn't know any of these bands, but um, like a band called We Lost the Sea. I listened to Departures, Departure Songs. Um, the quietest place on earth and triumph and disaster. I also listened to this newer band to me. It's called Medler, uh, a couple of their albums, and then uh, Strawberry Girls, uh, Italian Ghost. That's a good one. That has um, the guitarist from or one of the guitarists from Dance Gavin dance in it. They're like very like energetic, um, instrumental, very technical, and uh, very technical. What was the word I just used? <laughs> I've already lost my mind. Um, instrumentals? In, in, intense instrumentals. Very okay. technically intense instrumentals. Yeah, there we go. That's whew, Say that that's 10 mouthful. times fast. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, that was a glance into my past week, along with uh, all the albums from I Wrestled a Bear once. But, you know, we don't want to say we did that because, I mean, come on, we should have done it anyway, you know? Yeah, hopefully. So... Uh, cool. Okay. So we had a brand new episode of the after hours podcast come out. Um, you told me you really didn't have anything, uh, to say about it, which is nice. means we're doing something right. (laughs) There was anything I sorely (laughs) disagreed with. I, (laughs) I think, you know, you're probably right. You might be able to pull off a split with Memphis Mayfire. God, it's hard to to be early. It's It's gotta be early. Those words come out of my mouth. Uh, it does gotta be sleepwalking though man it's gotta be sleepwalking out if it's anything after that it's i don't think that works but yeah um yeah i don't know nothing nothing major that i just wouldn't stand for (laughs) what do you okay so i think we talked about it on the original once nothing episode but the split idea with mailing we kind of went a little more depth about it um you know, I made the comment to Eric about I would I don't want it to just be a split where it's like, hey, you guys do your songs and we're doing our songs. I want collaboration on this thing between the two bands. And he brought up a good point. I didn't even think about it. He said um, they've got so Mailing's got the line in um, Hell on the Rise says whores with a whores. Yeah. Whores with halos wishing for wings. And yeah. then once nothing's got in the Intimidator, um, just another angel wishing for halos and we kind of came up with this idea is like it'd be really cool if like in one of those collaboration songs they could somehow like work those lyrics like together like back to back or something i think that'd be kind of cool okay but yeah i could see it every yeah. time we talk about maylene i think more and more that the first album was really that was the height you know you think so I think so. Two and three are both really good. Um, two is pretty great. I think two is probably your favorite, right? I feel like they they peaked at two. Okay. See, I, one I was know. really good. See, I feel like you can't peak at your first one. I feel like I don't, you don't think, know what I don't you're getting into. Think it's a peak. It's just it changes. I like haven't after... even begun to peak, D. <laughs> You'll after... know when I peak. <laughs> after the I'll first peak all over one, this place. It, it changes to like a different style like it starts going a different way and i feel like you can really hear it in two and then in three it's pretty much fleshed out 
Right. And by four, it's a different band. What the hell is happening? <laughs> you know? So. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's get into this band, Josh. A little band known as I Wrestled a Bear Once. Um, or sometimes I like to read it, I Wrestled Da Bear Once. Da Bear. Da Bear. <laughs> uh, uh, genre, they are categorized by avant-garde it's avant-garde josh it's art it's you art just don't understand avant-garde metal math core and metal core would you agree with that josh uh yes does it have your stamp of approval your all of those things up? i used to call your it chuck norris thumb up <laughs> yeah i used to call it uh opera core opera core okay yeah i don't know why i never thought of that, that before um, <laughs> opera core and then i feel like the other genre that this kind of falls in with just with the the style, their whole demeanor, kind of the the image they're putting Goofiness. out there is party core. Party like, core. You know, you've nice. got your Attila's, you've got your Dr. Acula's. These, these are party core bands. Right. Cool. So, yeah, speaking of style, um, their song structures are known for chaotic changes in pace, ver- uh, varying between blast beats, breakdowns, and then contrasted rapidly by melodic quote lounged out interludes in the middle of their songs so you kind of give us a little bit of a take there josh is there any other um t- uh well um, let me ask you this way brand new listener i've heard of this band before i'm curious what am i about to get into josh give me a little description a little nugget um to the untrained ear this is going to sound like chaos Exactly. Um, to anybody who knows kind of what's going on, it's going to sound like, I, I don't know, it's, it's pretty impressive, you know, like they're, oh, yeah. they're obviously good at what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of math course stuff is not for everybody. They, I always hear people say, you know, it's, um, it's a musician's genre, you know, like, right. it's, oh, for it's, sure. Yeah. You know, music f- by musicians for musicians. Very technical. <clears throat> yeah. So um, before we go any further, let me ask you, um, Krista or Courtney? Do you want to say it now? Because I was I was going to ask you at the end of the episode. Oh, OK. Through it all. all right. You want to yeah, do it fine. now? Or you want to do it later? Uh, let's, we can save it. OK. Yeah, let's do I it mean, at the end of the episode. That way we get through both both sections. Yeah. I mean, Krista is the vocalist for a majority of. The discography. Well, we get two full albums out of both of them. D- is it Courtney on? Mm-hmm. Uh, Courtney starts on Late for Nothing. Uh, man, see, I th- I had like thought that listening to it, mm-hmm. and I don't know, it just didn't seem a hundred percent there. Like it seemed different, but it doesn't seem like where she's at on. Um, oh no, no, yeah, different now. Yeah. Oh yeah, way different. Um, And then if you even listen to like, she has a band that she was in before I wrestled a bear once. They only put out like one album. It's called Unicron. Okay. They only put out like one EP. We'll talk about that in the next episode a little bit, but um, just listening to a few songs from them, it's like, you can tell it's, it's going, she, I mean, you can tell she's going in the direction of like where she's at in, in this band. Mm -hmm. I wrestled a bear once, but I mean, it's a lot different from Spirit Box. I feel like she's, and I haven't even really listened to a whole lot, so maybe I shouldn't even say that yet. But I feel like she does a lot more screams in this band and in Unicron than she's done in Spirit Box. And even then, it's like her screaming style is way different. Yeah, I don't know. Box, I feel but... like Hail Mary and um, Spirit Box aren't that far off from each other. No, like you can album, tell it's, you can you tell know, it's like starting it's, to go there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like in terms of like late for nothing, and I'll, I'll yeah. talk about like the the sound of it when we get there. I mean, I want to wait on that. But um, is the this one thing a, I was go ahead. Is this a two parter? No, just one part. Oh, okay, you said next yeah. episode we'd talk about uh, Unicron. Yeah, <laughs> excuse me. So we're going to talk about in the next episode. We're going to transition with Courtney going into spirit box okay gotcha. and i'm just gonna be yeah i'm just kind of giving like a little bit of a a background on her history musically okay gotcha to begin it man you're ruining the you're ruining the story man i'm a storyteller <laughs> bro you're ruining my story 
<laughs> I'm like, are we making a whole episode out of like two and a half albums here? And what are like, we doing on the on the episode after that? Uh huh. Okay. And what about the episode after that one? Now, what are we doing a year from now? Can you tell me that? <laughs> when are we doing I mean, AFI? Ruin it for me, bro. <laughs> no, I, okay. Let me tell you real quick because we're getting off topic, but. With the AFI deal, dude, I've never really dug into their history, like at least discography and like genre wise. Have you listened to any like their like very beginning stuff before? Yeah. I've never listened to it before. And I did not realize that they started out as like a hardcore punk band. That's the best part of their discography. I did bro. not. I did not realize that. Like so, All like, Hallows, Black Sails in the Sunset. I'm talking um, even before that, man. Like in the early 90s. Yeah, I think oh, I'm going to blow your mind. <laughs> I've got most of them just like in my music, like not even okay. on my Spotify. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of doing a basic notes at the very beginning. You know, just yeah, looking at the genre. Was... Sunset was 99. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously they're they're around before that, but. Right, 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 right. And then Art of Drowning is 2000. Those are like two of their biggest early albums. Okay. But. um yeah, like I know there's uh hold on. There was a ton of EPs in the beginning. Yeah. A ton. I think they like total they have like eleven or twelve all together. It's crazy. But yeah, I just like I didn't realize that and then like starting to do my notes of just like putting the the uh, or going through the albums and everything, dude. It I'm not gonna lie, it kinda got me pumped for it. I'm kinda interested to hear more about it and like start listening to the albums, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the three before Black Sales are uh, Answer That and Stay Fashionable, Very Proud of You, Shut Your Mouth and Open Your Eyes. Uh, But pretty much all the way up until, I think, the self-titled in 2004, Mm -hmm. um, all of that is like pretty much the same genre. Sing the Sorrow starts to get a little bit more poppy, you know? Yeah. But by the time you hit December Underground, it's like full it's blown. Full fledged. Yeah. 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 And then they kind of you... go that direction for the rest of the way. But I was about to say, have you listened to like their newest stuff? I've only heard like a song here or there. I've not listened okay. to any of the albums like in full. Okay. We'll get to that. Uh, back to I Wrestled a Bear once. Um, been talking Who? about their style. Who? <laughs> this is not AFI. What was happening? Um, uh, I was going to say, um, uh, my take, and I'm just going to keep this simple. My take style, uh, style wise is listening to this. and made me think of when we were younger and our parents would get onto us for listening to this kind of music. And I, I can specifically hear them saying, uh, that you couldn't understand anything. The vocalist was saying, uh, when they were screaming and then, I think sometimes too they'd be like, they're not even saying anything. There's there's no lyrics, is there? There's not even any lyrics or whatever. And be like, no, there is lyrics, mom. There is lyrics. There's deep meanings to it. And it's funny, like going back now, like listening to like this genre that was like coming out when we were in high school. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's true. Cause I can't understand like one word they're saying, like screaming wise. But you know. That's I mean, why, I can uh, understand most of it. It's just an acquired... I don't speak that language, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's just... You listen to it enough, you... Yeah. Well, I mean, some some vocalists, I can do that. You get, like... Start getting, like, heavy like this. It's like, yeah, I just... I don't know what you're saying half the time. Which is fine, because it still sounds awesome to me, but... Yeah, <laughs> jibber-jabber, yeah! Jibber-jabber! So, anyway. Um, yeah, I don't... I wasn't, like... I knew of this band growing up, but like I never really listened to them. I think I heard like one or two songs and I just like when I was younger, dude, I just never really really was into like the whole like female vocalist uh, movement. I just wasn't into that. Dude, uh, it, it didn't like, do it for me. I loved it. It like broke my brain. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever oh, I was first working? like yeah whatever I first was kind of exposed to it like um like Walls of Jericho that's the you know, first one I was forever thinking, yeah. um or um uh, um uh, Light the City that was the first oh, like shoot, metal. I forgot all about them man yeah and she oh, she's wow. pretty brutal yeah I'm gonna have to um, look that up. 
Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that just set off like a lot of them for me. There was this band, dude, and I'll never. It's one of those albums that you remember, but you'll never track down. Right. Like it was yeah. so small time, mm-hmm. and I just I remember the song was called Pitbull Mentality. But I saw them one time at, um, I think at the other side, and. I don't remember the name of the band, but they were like a hardcore band and they had um, a female vocalist and she was insane. Really? Okay. But yeah, I just remember that like completely breaking my brain in the beginning, just being like, what? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, like, man, I specifically think of like, I mean, even Krista does it, but like on Hail Mary uh, with uh, Courtney, it's like some of those screams just like, dude, that sounds like a guy, man. You know, like, oh, she, but it's, yeah. but I'm like, it's just but a it's super a woman. low scream. Yeah. That's awesome yeah, and hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. Yeah. So, anyway, um, yeah, I just didn't really know, uh, what your history was. I knew, I mean, I remember you telling me about this band growing up, but I didn't know how into you, how into them you were. I was never like super into them. It was one okay. of those bands that, like, you know, okay, so EP comes out in 2007, right. you know, like I'm 17 years old and then, yeah, so these are coming out into me being like 21, 22, so right. 17 through like 21, 22. Give um, us a glimpse into that life. <laughs> oh God, it was, uh, it was that music video. Oh God. <laughs> chaos. Party! Hardcore. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's always you know, it's always fun to listen to those kind of bands, those party core bands, you know, throw on some my wrestle with bear ones or Attila, like the Rage album, you know? Yeah. Cool. Um, or Dr. Acula, the slander well, album. <laughs> I can definitely say going through it this time and listening to all these albums, dude, I'm just going to tell you up front. There's not a bad album in my opinion. And these are, these are albums to me where it's just like, you put them on, you go from A to Z and don't even worry about it. There's nothing. I feel like there's no dips at all. I love them. And this yeah. is a band. I'm like, man, I, I'm so glad I, I went back and listened to this band again. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But. It plays and they have a lot of cool sound clips. That's that's another thing about them, you know, yeah. like it's very on point for the time. I was just about to say that was the time period, man. It was like, let's especially when you're starting out, it's like, let's just put as many sound clips as we can to try to to jump just out from the crowd, you know. Pack this song full of sound clips from exactly. movies nobody's not seen. As, not as bad as, you know, somebody like Kill Whitney Dead, but you know. Cool. Bro, kill Whitney nobody's Dead. gonna beat them. That breakdown that has like three separate sound clips in it, like one breakdown. Is that the one with the? Oh, but wait a minute! I thought guns were bad. False. Guns are good. No, uh, a different one. Okay, that's the one I always think of. No, it's dun, the dun, one dun, that dun 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 dun. <laughs> it's Agamemnon from uh, Troy, where he says, "This is the time to attack." And then it's also, I don't know what movie it's from, but it, he says, uh, don't call me your fucking friend. And then I can't remember what the third one is. But there's like, it like it starts the breakdown, then it plays one of the sound clips, then like the breakdown slower, then the sound clip, then the breakdown slower. So it's just, mm-hmm. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, they definitely made that their uh, their calling card. That's for sure. That was their thing. Nobody out did was, kill Whitney Dead on sound clips that was their and uh, masochism. Exactly. Okay, cool. Let's let's get on track here because we have <laughs> we have just like I don't want to say this should be time, short. This, been good. <laughs> this, this was supposed be short to be an album. episode, people. So I don't know what's happening here. Yeah, this should be a short uh, episode. Okay, so formed two thousand seven in Shreveport, Louisiana, by Stephen Bradley and Krista Cameron. After Bradley's previous band broke up, the name of that band was All Together, just like I wrestled a bear once too. By the way, statues cry bleeding. Interesting, interesting. Okay, thumbs up approval. Uh, you also had John Ganey and Brian Dozer soon joining the duo so here's your first official lineup you have 
Krista Cameron on vocals, Stephen Bradley on guitar, John Ganey on guitar, and Brian Dozer on bass. No drummer yet. Um, we're not going to have a drummer until the first full-length album. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Josh, do you know where the name I Wrestled a Bear Once comes from? He's thinking. Oh, he's on mute. Oh, wait a minute. I can't remember. Okay. Supposedly, the name I wrestled a bear once comes from a quote from the great Gary Busey. Now, I don't know about you, but I can easily hear him saying that. Post-crash. Post-motorcycle crash. I the wrestled all, the, a bear once. The, the, the Gary Busey we all love. Not the, you know, normal Gary Busey. Yeah, I can I can hear him saying that for sure. Uh, so let's get right into their first EP, 2007's self-titled EP from Bucket of Truth Records. Uh, this is the only album with bassist Brian Dozer and the drums. Like I said, no drummer, but the drums were recorded through a drum machine program by uh, guitarist Stephen Bradley. Makes me think of... Uh, Vanna, they did their first, I think their first cup. No, let's see, their first album, which was just like a demo track. And there was only like two members or whatever. They used a drum machine too. Uh, songs on this EP include, but not limited to, Ulrich Firelord, Breaker of Mountains, Alaskan Flounder Basket. Mmm, delicious. Vlork, Mighty Wielder of Sheep. That one gets me every time. <laughs> Mighty Wielder of Sheep. <laughs> oh, boy. Still jolly after all these years. Corey Feldman, Holocaust, and Fire Lord Ulrich remix by Dada Yakuza. What'd you think, Josh? First impressions of the band I Wrestled a Bear once. Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Interesting, eh? I I remember when this one came out. Like I I remember liking it. Um, there was, you know, it's all the little fun things about a band like this that makes it acceptable. I feel like a lot of times, if they didn't have a lot of these kind of fun hooks, you know, if this was a band trying to take itself too seriously, I might not be as into it. Um, right. But they have an Inspector Gadget breakdown, you know? They mm -hmm. have, uh, they use a sound clip from Super Mario before a breakdown. Dee 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 dee. Dukes of Hazard, too, right? Isn't that, they do that on this oh, one? Oh, yep, the they one, do. Yep. They? Yeah. Yep. That's um, a pretty good one. <laughs> it's I always think, pretty... I always think it's like the end of a song and then they come right back at it. It's like, oh, okay. We're not yeah. done. A lot of those fake out exits. Yeah. Um, yeah, and especially at the time, like this is pretty experimental, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, it's mm -hmm. not really anybody else doing anything like this. Right. So um kind of the closest thing you have, you know, is like we were talking about, you know, there's walls of Jericho, there's light this city, but you know, I, I used to call this opera core because she does a lot of like really mm -hmm. impressive vocal stuff yeah kind of ethereal yeah. vocal stuff so mm -hmm. um yeah but i don't know this this album gets a thumbs up from me like you said they're okay. they're all good and they have there's some quality about them that a lot of the other bands that i mentioned in you know what i feel like fit in that genre mm. um don't have right and you know i can't throw on Attila and just listen to every album because most right. of them are garbage. Um, you know, I can't uh, throw on uh Dr. Acula and just listen to their whole thing because it's really like one good album, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh with I Wrestle the Bear once, they managed to capture, you know, what each of those bands only had on one or two albums and carry it through their discography so far. Right. Yeah. Even though they've kind of changed their sound along the way. Right. Yep. I agree with everything you just said. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Moving that on. Makes it easy. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, let me ask you the remix. Uh, this song, Fire Lord Ulrich, the remix, did you like it? 
Was it good? Huh? No, I don't like did the remix. Like I'm, like not, remix. I'm not into Did that. you listen? Yeah, I was about to <laughs> say, did you listen at all to the remix albums? No. Okay. No. I didn't I didn't either. I mean, I didn't want to waste my time because I'm yeah. not really into that. But I'm not gonna lie, I, I was okay with with this one at least. I'm not gonna listen to a whole album of them, but this one I'm like, okay, yeah, it's good. It's, it's right. okay. Like at the Moving end on. of the album, yeah. I I'll put up with like one or two, you know, those tracks at the end of an album. I don't want to hear like yeah, I'm not gonna listen uh, to it. A full changed, album of it changed um it's all happening from a 30 minute album to over mm-hmm. an hour album, just with all the with the remix added on. Yeah, to all them, the yeah. remixes they have the on deluxe there, like, album. Yeah, yeah. I'm good on that. No, but it's it's definitely a good entrance, um, you know, into uh, into their discography um, to start out. So that's 2007 self titled EP. Following the release of the EP, Ryan Pearson would join the band on drums, but would quickly be replaced by Mikey Montgomery. This band is just like some of the other ones we have talked about. There's a lot of member changes throughout their history. And it's a short history. It's not even 10 years long, but there's a lot of uh, band member changes, unfortunately. Uh, so you got Mikey Montgomery on drums now. Brian Dozer would be replaced by Dave Branch on bass. And John Ganey on guitar would leave for a quick minute, being replaced by Melissa Cameron. Which now, I just realized this. I wonder if that's Chris's like sister or something. They both have the same last name. Hmm, maybe. Uh, but yeah, he got replaced by Melissa Cameron on guitar. Only to come back and replace her. So, you know. Well, hiatus for John just to come back. Uh, with the success of their EP, came touring through North America, and this caught the attention of Century Media Records, which quickly signed the band. All right, 2009s. It's all happening, Josh. It's all happening. Oh my God, it's all happening from Century Media Records. Produced by Ryan Bosch and I Wrestled a Bear Once. This is the only album with bassist Dave Branch. And this album sold, Josh, 4,300 copies in its first week. What? Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive, man. Wow. There you go. Bringing it back. Cool. It reached number one. That's right, Josh. Number one on Billboard Top Heat Seekers chart for new artist albums category. Oh. Nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see you. <laughs> I see you there. Ultimate Guitar's review of the album stated, <clears throat> quote, I Wrestled a Bear Once are one of the strangest yet most unique bands out there today. And It's All Happening displays their style superbly. There are also random things thrown into songs, whether it's the famous Dixie car horn from the Dukes of Hazard, or the hillbilly sounding section in You Ain't No Family. Besides their obvious random and strange sections, other sections display superior musicianship, showing their ability to flawlessly change styles and switch sections. I believe Ultimate Guitar hit the nail right on the head, buddy. Uh, yeah. Songs on this album include You Ain't No Family, White Water in the Morning, Danger in the Manger, I'm Cold and There Are Wolves After Me, Tastes <laughs> Like Kevin Bacon, Mm-mm-mm. The Cat's Pajamas, Pazuzu for the Win, Pazuzu, Black Eyed Bush, Eli Cash versus The Godless Savages, and the finale, See You in Shell. Plus a bonus track, Danger in the Manger, Jimmy Urine Remix. I'm not saying anything about the remixes. Oh, well, I'm not. I'm not. We'll, we'll say something it. about it. Want, we'll say it. something a little bit about it here in a moment, but I'm not going through all that. Uh, yeah, it's all happening. It's all happening, Josh. Oh, my God. It's all What's all happening? happening? Oh, God. Um, debut album, Josh. They did. They did a pretty good job with a little taste on their EP. How they do on their uh, their debut full length? Honestly, there's not like a point for me in these albums where I'm like, oh, this one's the best, or this exactly. is the high point. 
Mm-hmm. You know, they're all kind of a similar goodness. <laughs> it's, know, very, like, it's like very, especially like early in their album or early in their discography. I feel like there's a lot of like smoothness throughout like the albums. Yeah. Like, I mean, transitions from song to song. It's very smooth. It doesn't feel very broken. And you're right. It, I think that it, that leads to, you know, the whole album being really good and not oh, well, you know, there's, you know, there's valleys and peaks, or I can tell this is the high point, this is the low point, or whatever, you know? Yeah. Or having one song stand out above all the others. So that's one thing I really like about these early these early albums, or their albums in general. Yeah. Well said. Did you have anything else? I'm, I kind of cut you off there. No. I mean, I feel like I, I have a couple, like, favorites on this album, but mm-hmm. as yeah, a go whole, for it. like, uh, Danger in the Manger... Um, and then tastes like Kevin Bacon. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Delicious. I could um, go for some bacon right now. You ain't no regular families. bacon, not Kevin Bacon. Regular bacon. <laughs> uh, you ain't no family is a good one too. There's one. some pretty, some pretty cool parts in it, but I don't know. Like even the way white water in the morning, like starts like that is just like, epic and a hard as mm, hell like mm, i could see mm. them like starting a show with that you right. know yep yeah for me like i said it's this it's like some, about some of the other bands I, the first one i think comes to my mind is comeback kid on some of their albums it's just like just put it on and go you know i don't i don't need to i don't need to skip around or i just want to go to this song no i'm putting it on a to z buddy smooth transitions nice songs Easy like Sunday morning. Yeah. All right. 2009's It's All Happening, their debut album. A success. 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 And with that success from their debut album, the band saw stints on The Van's Warp Tour, the tour that stole Christmas with Miss May I and Hail Exhale and Of Machines, and the 2009 Empiricon Never Say Never say die club. Hmm. I spelled that wrong though. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, 2009's Empiricon Never Say Die Club tour, which featured such bands as I Wrestle the Bear Ones, Architects, Despised Icon, As Blood Runs Black, mm. Oceano, The Ghost Inside, and Horse the Band. Gotta love some a lot of a lot of good. I want to talk about some on that list. Yes, I was. That's why I wrote them down. I wanted to see what you say about that lineup there, man, because I thought it was a pretty good lineup too. Yeah, that's uh, Chef's Kiss right there. Well, yeah. Uh, Dave Branch would be replaced by Mike Martin on bass, and in 2010, the band would re-release "It's All Happening" as a three special disc set which include the regular album the remix version of the album and a dvd to go along with it now this version allowed listeners to use their song stems to create their own remixes um it made me think of so the band that i talked about earlier called strawberry girls uh, that's a post-rock instrumental band they Mm. did this before on their band camp where it's just like i think it's all just like drum beats though that you can like buy the album it's like two to two to five seconds long um and like kind of like create your own like remixes with it or whatever so i thought that was kind of cool um you know the remix album i don't care i actually thought this was kind of cool though that they would they would uh, allow you to uh, use these song stems to create your own remixes yeah and hey josh if one remix album didn't satisfy your needs how about a dubstep remix EP entitled It's All Dubstep featuring five songs from their debut album remixed in dubstep form. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. This is, I was just like, this what perfect, in the world? It's because it, that was like at 2002, bro. That's like... 2002? Height. Yeah, or two, I'm sorry, 2012. Like... <laughs> That is like the height of that shit, you know? Like that's 2012? Yeah. Do you mean 2010? 2000 Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, 2010. Yeah. Yeah, that's like I mean 
those few years and that's where you're really starting to get into dumb stuff. that's when uh old skrillex really took off sunny more sunny more skrillex <laughs> uh, oh boy okay so this is all i'm gonna say about the remix and i'll be done with it some of these names of the remixers on this album are kind of funny to me uh and i chose a few just to say to you and i wanted to see what you thought um it's nothing like skrillex though these are different so you have alien vampire okay you have big chocolate okay you got sluggo and then you got itchy robot itchy robot itchy robots (laughs) what kind of names are these it's like to me it's it these names make me think that you went on one of those like create a band name websites that like generates a name for you or gamer tags, yeah, that's true. But it makes me think of one of those websites where you just like, just have the website like create you a random name, and they're just so like weird but like generic at the same time. Itchy yeah. robot. I mean, come on, bro, really. Itchy robot. Okay, so we talked about kind of the the goofiness from the band. Um, here's how goofy the band is, Josh. Guitarist Stephen Bradley stated that the group's new album, which would be ruining it for everybody, will embrace black metal. Okay, okay. Okay. Along with the band incorporating the use of corpse paint. That's right, I said corpse paint. Expressing that the entire band agreed that they do not want to be pigeonholed as a band that is suffixed as quote core any longer and the new record will be quote 90 percent black metal bradley went on to say quote we were sick of getting lumped in with the scene and whatever core bands so we decided to embrace our roots and just go straight black metal on the new album we had to change our image to match because well of course that's just as important if not more so than the music end quote uh the black metal music the black metal musical shift was later confirmed to be a large practical joke orchestrated by the band and the heavy metal website metal sucks i was about uh, to from, say i hate yeah, to break this, what? To <laughs> this, <laughs> what? this album is not black metal uh premiering a new song from the upcoming album on the website which featured no black metal the group primarily executed the joke to reveal and parody the over serious attitude in black metal fans so my question to you josh is was it a successful joke was it um, was i think it so it? and then the album is titled ruining it for everyone that's right? what i thought too i was like actually that kind of works out with the album it's pretty title. good yeah yeah it's pretty good Let's talk about 2011's Ruining It for Everybody. Ruining, ruining, are you, you will rue today. You will rue it. 2011's Ruining It for Everybody from Century Media Records. Produced by Stephen Bradley, the guitarist of I Wrestle to Bear Once, and Ryan Bosch. This is the final album for vocalist Krista Cameron. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Uh, guitarist Stephen Bradley states that, quote, it's heavier, catchier, and better organized than anything we've done so far. We took a really spastic blend of genres and made it more cohesive. Now, KillYourStereo.com described I Wrestled a Bear once and their new album stating, quote, their schizophrenic mesh of genres and tongue-in-cheek humor is refreshing and intriguing, if nothing else. Look, if you don't like what is being presented, then fine, don't listen. But for a bit of entertainment that has an equal amount of proficiency, ruining it for everybody is an interesting listen. It's unpredictable yet well-structured and almost revels in forcing listeners to scratch their head and question, what the hell is going on? (laughs) Beginning with the electronic avant-garde metal mashup Next Next Visible Delicious, the initial song saves you a lot of time. If you don't buy into the album and in, in its introduction period, then the subsequent tracks won't offer much. But for the rest, in its quirky way, this sound is quite captivating. Main song, You Know, 
that ain't them dogs real voices is more straight down the line while it's it is bro isn't it is one of the album's heavier moments songs on this album include next visible delicious you know that that ain't them dogs real voice deodorant can't fix ugly people this head music makes my eyes rain it is bro isn't it gold jacket green jacket break it down comancho stay to the right i'm gonna shoot karate nipples button it up uh yeah that is ruining it ruining it for everybody that's hard to say man at least for me ruining, ruining it, it for everyone for everybody, everybody. <laughs> for, <laughs> for everyone, everyone instead of ah. <laughs> um sophomore album josh like i said had a good intro with their ep had a had a really good uh you know freshman album debut album whatever you want to call it sophomore album sophomore slump or not um you know how i said there's no album that i feel like is just better than the others mm -hmm. um still true but this one is my favorite okay um, out of their so all I'm, out of all their discography yes i would say okay. so okay. um this one and hail mary are close for me hail mary is different um but it's a different i was looking for for them to kind of come back thick. with you know yeah. like i i was kind of worried that they would be a disappointment after chris left yeah but well and but we talked about it before it's like vocalist is the hardest thing to change you know in, in a band yeah. and to stay relevant or you know still stay good or whatever because it's i mean you're talking about people's voices sounding totally different maybe their screams are totally different whatever and you know you you didn't realize that this was the last album for krista you thought her last album was late for nothing right uh yes Yes. So at least there's a little bit of like, because I felt the same way too, kind of listening to Late for Nothing. I knew going into it that it was Courtney's first album, but it's there's still some similarities, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, there's enough similarities that like I had to question who it was. You is know? it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, were you done? I'm sorry. I didn't know if you were finished or not with your thought on uh, uh, ru ruining it for everybody. Uh, yeah, I think so. I just saying this is favorite. my favorite one. Yeah. Uh, any songs stick out to you, or is it again just one of those where it's just like, yeah, it's really good all through? I think it's really good all through. Um, I mean, a couple high points are probably going to be, um, you know, that ain't them dogs. Um, it is bro. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> bro. Yeah, I mean, just the, I feel like the whole album. Do you have a favorite uh, song title, at least up until this point? Mm, the sheep one is pretty funny. The sheep one's pretty funny. Karate nipples is kind of funny. I don't, yeah, I don't really get that nipples. one, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> nipples. <laughs> cool. How do they do yeah, karate? Just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um... I mean, it just goes, for me personally, it just goes back to what I've been saying. It's one of those where I just put it on and I go, man. It's a good it's a good album to be listening to when I'm trying to do some other stuff, just good background music. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, that, you know that ain't them dogs or a voice. That's a good one. Of course, the music video behind Josh there, too, is really good. Uh, you compared it to... Uh, Norma Jean's, um, what's that one called? If you got it at five, you got it at 50 music video. Yeah. Which one's worse? Um, or more disgusting, if, if you, you said? If you got it at five is grosser. They're like throwing up. <laughs> We're like projectile vomiting it, man. Yeah. yeah. And this one, I'm just like watching them like grossly eat pizza. True. You see, there was a worm on a plate too with on a piece of cake. There was a oh, live okay. worm. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. okay 2011's ruining it for everybody i did it i said it i said the word right yay <laughs> okay so like i said um 
this was the last album with Krista Cameron uh, on lead vocals. She would leave the band in the middle of their 2012 Vans Warp Tour due to pregnancy. Now, at this time, she was thinking, I'm just going to do the pregnancy, you know, give birth, and I'll, I'll end up coming back. Um, but while she was gone, the band actually recruited Courtney LaPlante um, to be their vocalist on tour. And like I said, she was coming from the band Unicron. Um, so she filled in during Krista's absence. But <laughs> I wrote my notes in this next one. Uh, I don't even know if this is the right thing, but I put like 48 hours voice. But Krista never returned to the band, deciding to spend more time with her new family. <laughs> yeah. So Krista decided um, she wanted to do the family thing and screw music. I want to be an adult. I want to be an adult, man. Yeah. So she decided to leave the band. Um, and so the rest of the members decided, hey, it's Courtney Chick. She's all right. Let's replace Krista with Courtney. So, yeah. Courtney uh, joins I Wrestled a Bear once. And we get 2013's Late for Nothing. Late Century for nothing. Media Records. Um... The album cover is is that woman wearing a mask? I think I can't really it, tell. I can't tell if it's a dog's face just put it's, on there or if it's supposed to be some kind of dog mask. Okay, so it's a dog. I think so. Okay, because I can never even tell like what it was, regardless if it was a mask or just like somebody, you know, photoshopping something on there or whatever. Yeah. Produced by guitarist Stephen Bradley and the final album for guitarist John Ganey. Writer Barely Sinister of NewTranscendence.com talked about the album, talked about the song structure and instrumentation on the new album, stating, quote, Let's face it, I wrestled a bear once, or otherwise known as, and I forgot to even say this, I Wabo. Josh, I do you Wabo? Because yeah. I Wabo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's face it, Iwabo was never a band that was meant to be taken seriously. They are a band who is meant to be listened to loudly at parties with lots of drinking and goofing off. However, this new album seems to be their first attempt at making a serious record. Every song is structured well enough to be considered a serious track while keeping that I Wrestled a Bear once flavor that we've all come to love or hate depending on who we're talking to. The instrumentals are better than ever. The band has pulled out all the stops and truly put their heart and soul into this to show that, regardless of the sudden change, they remain unstoppable. You've got crazy, out-there songs like I Wrestled a Bear Once has been known for, i.e. Thunder Chunky, Letters to Stallone. You've got a ballad or two uh, like Mind the Gap. And then you've got more experimental tracks like Carnage Asada, which features the legendary Steve Vai shredding it up with the band. What more could you ask for? Josh, I ask you, what more could you ask for from I Wrestled a Bear Once? I think he's pretty much on point there. Like, this is one that feels more mature, more cohesive. Yeah then like the others um it does feel like a, a slightly more serious album you know um yeah i would agree and it made me wonder it's like okay not that like krista was the only one that was goofy but it's like did she bring a lot of that goofiness to i wrestled a bear once you know right just i don't know maybe this is just the point where they you know, they've got a new vocalist. They're going to be kind of adapting to a new sound. Maybe this is where you lean into that, you know? True. And this is true. You try something different. Yeah. Because well, they overall, still have the elements that everybody likes, you know? Right. But it's, mm -hmm. it's a little more put together. Right. Well, overall, this album seems to have been met with mixed reviews and I, I think i would attribute that to again the vocalist change because like we talked about it's it's hard to it's hard to stay really good when you change vocalists i i like it personally i don't i mean i like both of them i think they yeah. both have their unique styles and we'll talk about that again here in a little bit 
Um, and I don't know if like the people who didn't like this album maybe were more of like, well, I didn't like the vocalist or maybe they didn't like the more, like you said, cohesive, more like mature sound to it. Um, we want the sound clips. They said, we want the sound clips. Songs on this album include the intro track, Thunder Chunky, Letters to Stallone, Snake Charmer, Boat Paddle, Fire Bees, Fire Bees, Mine the Gap, Carnage Asada featuring Steve Vai on guitar, The Map, That's a Horse of a Different Color. I'd buy that for a dollar. Inside Job and the Finale, It Don't Make Me Know, Never Mind. What'd you think, Josh? First album with Courtney LaPlante as vocalist. It's pretty solid, and I gotta give them credit because I feel like they make a pretty smooth transition from, you know, uh, from Krista to, you know, th using this album as the bridge to right. Hail Mary. Right. Um, it doesn't feel disrupted. Their discography. It it feels like she's almost replicating Chris's style a little bit mm -hmm. in her own way. And then in Hail Mary, it's really her own style. You know, right. so this is a really good bridge album. I think that's a good idea for bands making a major switch like that. Yeah. I love um I like both their screams. I really like Courtney's. And this album, it makes me think of I mean, it sounds like she's cupping a lot, and it makes me think of, not exactly, but it makes me think of Corey Putman on Oh God, The Aftermath. Because okay. I remember we, when we talked about that episode, I remember saying that it's his vocals on that album sound like he's he's cupping a lot, and it's it's kind of like, I don't know, it's hard to describe like the sound. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I like it. It's kind I'm of a, a hollow of sound. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I, I'm really, I really am a fan of it. Um, yeah, it's good. Is this your favorite yeah. one? Uh, I don't know if I have a favorite album, man. Because, like I said, all four of the Fullings are so good. Um, man, you had to ask me that, didn't you? Yep. I would say. Mm, I mean, in terms of, like, the vocalist, I don't know if I can pick one between Courtney's albums. And I would, if I had to pick between Krista's two albums, I would probably say I like ruining it for everybody a little more than okay. um, It's All Happening. They're both really good. Um, God, I just, man, Hail Mary and, and Late for Nothing are really good. But Hail Mary's, I don't know. Hail Mary is so much heavier. I can't, I can't decide, Josh. I can't decide, man. Why do you put this pressure on me? <laughs> Why do you do this to me? Yeah, I don't know. I might, I'm, I might have to... I listen to these albums a lot. Probably a lot more than what I do on bands that I don't really listen to. You know, going into an episode like this. Um, so it's not like I... This would be like my second time through or whatever, but... I'll probably have to go back through again a couple of times and be like, okay, I need to decide which one's probably my favorite and then come back to you on that one. Okay. You got anything else for uh, Late for Nothing, Josh? Nope, another banger. I mean, it looks like uh, it's a pretty underrated album because there's nothing on here that breaks 500,000. Yeah, what, yeah, what do we than, got? Uh, um, go ahead. So boat paddle is mm -hmm. uh, the only one. It's that's a um, good one, man. A million seven hundred thousand. Yeah. Other than that, it's mostly like two hundred thousand. Felt the ocean breaking. Yeah. Um. Overall, though, so far, well, even you can even tell me about Hail Mary because we're about to talk about it too. But like, uh, Spotify numbers. What's their discography like? How's it, how's it looking buddy how's it looking i would say decent if i had to guess EP's, i would probably say if he's very low like a hundred thousand yeah. on most of the songs yeah 
Um, you would have to guess that on an EP, though. It's all happening mostly like so we've got 200,000, a million, 300,000, 200 or 2 million, 900,000, 200,000, 100,000, 200,000. So there's a couple spikes, but for the most part, it's like 200, 300,000 listens. Okay. Um, ruining for everybody. About the same. A few hundred okay. thousands, a couple two hundred thousands. There's only one million. Late for nothing, dogs? same deal. Only one million, two hundred, three hundred thousands. Um, and then Hail Mary too. I mean, there's a few four hundreds, a six, but other See, than I, Gift of Death, nothing breaks a million. I would almost think that those last two probably would have spiked. At least Hail Mary, based off of the popularity uh, from Spirit Box. Yeah. I would have thought maybe like a lot more people would have been like, oh, she was in I Wrestled a Bear once? I'm going to go check that out and you know, hear, what's, hear what she sounded like in there or whatever. But so I'm yeah. a little surprised that, that those two, or at least Hail Mary, didn't spike. Um, so cool well that is 2013's late for nothing moving onward john ganey would leave the band soon after their previous release leaving a spot open at guitar it wouldn't be until time to record for the next album that guitarist mike stringer would take the vacant spot now if that sounds that name sounds familiar to um, any of the listeners he is the future guitarist of spirit box he is also courtney plant's uh, uh husband now they were mm -hmm. engaged at that time and he was actually in the band unicron with her right before they disbanded um, so that's kind of interesting too we'll talk about that in the next episode again um, uh, i gotta i gotta throw some numbers at you here let's hear them uh, the first spirit box album which came out mm -hmm. two years after hail mary yeah um three million one million two million three million two million one million four million what the very, hell very and popular bro you've got there were a couple of tracks on here that had like 30 million listens mm -hmm. circle oh, yeah. with me circle with me has 30 million listens yep there's nothing on this album under like 10 million yep very popular dude very what popular the oh my god <laughs> does it make you mad it makes me a little mad because she's got two great albums with this band that have like almost zero love see that's what i'm saying i was kind of surprised that more people didn't like go people back after know. they got well like that's why we're here that. that's why we're here bro that's why we're here to tell the masses i'm here to tell you people to go listen to if not the whole discography i mean listen to the whole discography but go back if you're a fan of spirit box go back and listen to i wrestled the bears hail mary and late for nothing it has courtney laplan on it same same vocalist maybe her voice maybe just a little bit more mature in spirit box singing wise but i mean it's still good and these are two great albums and she's got a full band with her not just a couple of guys or mike playing all the instruments in spirit box and her just doing vocals it's a full freaking band and they're talented too rant's over <laughs> yeah hail mary <laughs> hail mary let's go hail mary come on people moving from century media records to artery records the band would prepare for their next and what would be their final album 2015's hail mary from artery records produced by guitarist stephen bradley and the only album with mike stringer on guitar the difference between her first album with the band and this one for courtney was being more involved in the writing process as she stated she quote was there for every single moment whereas she felt more isolated on the previous release which is i found that kind of interesting i mean it um, makes sense she's the outsider coming in for sure you know yeah yeah and it, that kind of plays into her and mike both leaving i wrestled a bear once like i said we'll talk about that um in the next episode a little 
a little deeper. Uh, a review of the album from KillYourStereo.com stated, quote, Hail Mary is an offering darker than anything else I Wrestled a Bear once have released. From its opener, Gift of, Gift of Death, kicking off with an intentionally cluttered sonic chaos, the album gives your ears a battering that you surely can't be passive about. Overall, it's heavy enough for aspects to come across more like power violence than metalcore. See the fast drumming on Remain Calm for reference, but also Erase It All's brutal grindcore tinge delivery. That is a beautiful song, by the way. That's 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 me. That's not that's not the reviewer. That's me, oh, Curtis. Okay. That's me saying that. Now back to the reviewer. There is, however, a catch. Sometimes the value of crafting songs that prompt headbangs become priority over giving these tracks direction, structure, or purpose. It's not that every song requires the generic metalcore recipe, unclean verses plus clean choruses plus breakdowns. It's just that they tend to blend together and, alas, few, if any, become memorable. Where, let me see if you remember this band name from Cancer Bats, Cancer Bats episode. They did a split EP with Cancer Bats. Rolo Tam- Tamasi. Yeah, vaguely. Yeah. I don't think we could find that split, though, I think was the problem. So we didn't really get to listen to them. But where Rolo Tomasi build experimental core with flair and individualism, I Wrestled a Bear once, unfortunately, fall below the bar. The band slightly remedies it remedies that by dropping in gym like moments that stick even if the song even if the name of the song doesn't eerie points when the onslaught of heavy instrumentals and vocals pauses for breath see doom to fail part two mark hail mary with redemptive qualities obviously i wrestled a bear once are a band that screams and it's not that that the use of cleans provides the structure it's just that they allow the song's characteristics that stand out amid the blur of track tracks excuse me Furthermore, their focus on technical playing, see trips and kill to death, provides respite from the many, many chugs. Chug, 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 chug. Yeah. Songs on this album include Gift of Death, Remain Calm, Green Eyes, Erase It All, featuring Hernan Eddie Hermida of Suicide Silence. You know, the, the, the not good vocalist from suicide silence which is upsetting he was so great and all shall perish yeah yeah i mean kind of a kind of a tough spot to you know follow right yeah uh you also have curse the spot doomed to fail part one and two killed to death uh trips man of virtue carbon copy weighed in the water we all float down here, and your God is too small. Um, Josh, what at least what did you think about the review? I know that was a lot to take in there. Um, seemed like they liked it at first, but then they had some some uh, things that they didn't like about the album. What did you think? What was the things they didn't like? So let's see. Uh, let's see did, 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 there is this is back to the quote here there is however a catch sometimes the value of crafting songs that prompt headbangs become a priority over giving these tracks direction structure or purpose it's not that every song requires the generic metalcore recipe of unclean verses plus clean choruses plus breakdowns it's just that they tend to blend together and alas few if any become memorable where Rolo Tomasi build experimental core with flair and individualism, I wrestled bear. I wrestled a bear once. Unfortunately, fall below the bar. So it sounds like they're kind of like saying, oh, it's a lot of these songs are like the generic, like metal core, and they're not hmm. like unique." I don't really agree with that. I mean, they feel like they're their own. You yeah, know? and there's. I feel like there's plenty of memorable. Like yeah, wrist and stuff. I don't know. The oh, dude, the one that comes to my mind, and I mean, it's it's the riff, it's the guitar riff, and it's um, the drums too. The way they're going on the uh, the kick drum, uh, it's in. We all float down here. We all float down here. It's that. It's kind. Of, it's in the middle of the song, and they do it a couple of times, but 
like the guitar part is just like uh dun 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 but it's like the way that like they're how do i how do i describe this i'm not gonna be able to describe it so just go listen for yourselves why don't you go listen to it real quick josh um well i uh i'll talk a little more here um but yeah i don't i don't really feel like i mean they feel like it's it's theirs it's not like some carbon copy or anything like that uh which is kind of funny to me because there there's a song title in this on this album called carbon copy um her her cleans sound like they're really coming along um yeah and her her uh good lord her screams her heavy screams dude they are they're thick and they are they are sexy um and yeah I, I, like about, i said are you talking about just like the real staccato parts it was like dun, 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 dun. like every i now think and then so like, it was like dun 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 or something like that mm-hmm. yeah i'd probably we probably have to listen to it together like later on i can tell you when or whatever um yeah, did you have anything else for uh, Hail Mary? Before we wrap nope. up, uh, put, put a nice um, little bow on it. I thought I thought we were headed in a good direction, and then they left and started their own band. Yeah. That, in my in, opinion, isn't as good, but... In 2016, newer members LaPlante and Stringer would get married and soon start a side project known as Spirit Box. I mean, I don't know. You may have heard it before. I don't know. Uh, with... Who? <laughs> with Spirit uh, Fox? Spirit Fox. That's the cover band. Spirit Fox. <laughs> uh with I Wrestled Bear ones, or known as Iwabo, Iwabo. Going silent, fans started wondering if the band was done. When asked about Iwabo and her status in the band Iwabo, Courtney confirmed she was no longer in Iwabo, explaining that she and her husband leave, uh, left due to them being worn down by their status as, quote, replacement people. Uh, obviously, this was referring to how neither of them were original members and their desire to not be stagnant and to do something different. Um, and I think I think I'll say this in the next episode too. They actually had the idea of Spirit Box, or more or less just like doing something together themselves back in like 2011, 2012, 2011. So this has been kind of building for a while. Okay. Uh, with only three members remaining, the band decided uh, to call it quits and go their separate ways. So we have a final lineup of Stephen Bradley on guitar, Mike Martin on bass, and Mikey Montgomery on drums. Now, Josh, I, I I hate to tell you this, we have a final lineup of nobody. <laughs> basically, yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, so now we're here at the end of the episode. Let's Let's go back to the question that you wanted to bring up earlier. Yeah. Uh, Krista Cameron versus Courtney LaPlante. Yeah, both had two albums each. What's your take? Um, I mean, my favorite album Krista is on. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I lean more towards Krista. I I like. I do really like um, Courtney's vocals on "Late for Nothing." It's an interesting style for her, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I go Krista for sure. Okay, but uh, I'm probably gonna go Courtney. Okay, it's a tight race. I like both of them. I like both of them a lot. Yeah. I'm probably gonna go Courtney. And I, I mean, I will tell you. I mean, I don't, I don't hate Spirit Box. They're not my favorite band or anything like that. There's from the little bit that I've listened to, I'm okay with it. I like it. Um, but I really like Courtney's vocals, clean and unclean, in on the two albums that she did with I Wrestled a Bear once. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I didn't even, like I said, I didn't even know she was in I Wrestled a Bear once until you mentioned it however many episodes ago. And I was like, what? Really? Okay, cool. I'll have to check that out. So I'm glad we... Uh, we got to uh, do this episode on I Wrestled a Bear once. Because like I said at the beginning of the episode, I knew this band in high school. Heard about them. Heard a couple of songs. Eh, really wasn't into it. 
going back through this time, dude, really was like, yes, okay, I am, I am into this. And really, like, I haven't been into, like, any heavy stuff like this, like, in a while. And it's, it's gotten me to kind of, like, go back into, like, something, like, between the barrier to me, too. You know, that kind of, like, just that heavy vocals. Uh, speaking of which, I forgot to tell you this in my album quilt. Uh, I listened to the uh, their newest album, Colors 2. It's pretty good. If you like Colors 1, you might like Colors 2. So go check that out. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to go with Courtney on this one. Slight, slight lead, just slight. Because I like Krista too, but yeah. Ew. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've just I've just lost like some credibility, more credibility uh, with Josh, <laughs> but that's okay. I've lost all credibility, haven't I? <laughs> yes, yeah, you have. All right, man, you have any final thoughts on our Wrestle to Bear ones? No, I mean... There's there's some really good ones in here. I think even if you aren't a fan of Hail Mary or even the EP, I think you're gonna like the the three in between. Yeah. This is my uh, final plea again. If you're if you are a spirit box fan, if you came here because of Courtney LaPlante, LaPlante, whatever you say her name, if you came here because of that, please for the love of God, check out Hail Mary and lay for nothing because there are there are other things musicians do they have early stuff and it's cool to go back and listen like their yeah they're in other good bands so i mean definitely go check that out and then when it gets done with that go back even further and listen to the first two full-length albums with chris on it you will not be sorry yeah all right let's get on out of here because this thing went way longer than what we both uh planned it to be but every time we say we're going to do a short episode, it's longer than our normal episodes. This is true. Yeah, this is true. And then like the longer ones, like that AFI one, dude, we'll probably be done in like two episodes and be like, what the heck happened? Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Make sure to follow us on Twitter at is survived by pro for news and the latest episode postings, not just on this show, but our other shows as well. We have the History of the Course After Hours podcast, which just came out with a brand new episode this past week on the band Once Nothing. Definitely go check that one out. Definitely go check out Once Nothing because that is a band that deserves your intention. Uh, we also have a brand new episode coming out this next week also, and it's about Fall of Troy. Definitely go check out that episode. Definitely go check out that band. Uh, we also have the Red Right Hand podcast, which has covered all six seasons of the Peaky Blinders. Um, we actually just put out a brand new episode of that, too, this past couple of weeks. Go check out that. And we also have the Throne of the Dragon podcast, uh, which so far has covered season one of House of the Dragon, soon to be season two. And currently we are doing our Aegon the Conqueror uh, series. We'll have a brand new episode of that coming up here pretty shortly as well also while you are on twitter make sure to follow my co-host at joshua lynn gary make sure to leave us a five-star review and write us a comment on whatever podcast service you're using you ready i'm ready you look ready bro bro you look ready if you want to listen to us and see our smiling faces just head on over to YouTube. Just search. Is Survived by Nice. Is Survived by Productions. And that'll have every episode from all of our shows. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video. All right. If you didn't realize it, in the next episode, we're going to be talking about a little band. I don't know. You, like you said, you may have heard it. You may not have. I don't know. It's called Spirit Box. No big deal. So definitely come back for that one. Until then, we will see you later.